Hello YouTube. Today, uh, <laughs> by request, the Springfield M1A SOCOM, uh, also known as the M14. This is the short barreled version Springfield made later for all the people who love things like polymer and ridiculously heavy rail systems. Um, not sure, uh, the value of all that. It is a crazy heavy gun despite having the shorter size. A little more stable because of that, but uh, anyway, most people are used to seeing this in its longer, sexier wooden form. Uh, but this is the uh, polymer version. Mechanically, same, same. Uh, biggest challenge and difference between them is getting that ridiculous rail system off. And so we're starting without that uh, for two reasons. One is uh, I lost one of the screws. Don't feel like finding it. And two is, it's just a pain in the butt. It's just a whole bunch of screws that you got to undo. And uh, it's just, you know, a hassle. And I figure you know, most people can handle a screwdriver or, or even a, a hex head screwdriver by themselves. Or they really wouldn't be hanging out on this channel. So, uh, what we're going to do is I also have no room on the bench for a rifle. Um, especially with the stock still on. So that's really what we're going to go after here is getting the stock off. And uh, then we're going to go um, system by system. We're going to talk about the, uh, the business end, the uh, fire control system, and the bolt system uh, independently based on how much we can squeeze under the uh, viewable area here. So it is uh, empty. No magazine. Uh, to take this rifle down as i said i already dropped the top off it's just a significant series of screws there's screws here screws on the side screws underneath screws screws everywhere it's it's a screwy thing but uh once you got that off getting the um getting the rest apart is pretty straightforward uh this mechanism has been used uh more than once in history and essentially the fire control system is an independent system that slid up into the receiver and the, the same mechanism that holds it to the inside of the receiver also latches onto itself. And the trigger guard is the key to that. The trigger guard actually has just a little bit of flex in it. So if you stick something into that hole in the trigger guard, you'll be able to lift it out just a little bit like that and then pull the thing forward. And now what you're actually doing there is as the trigger guard comes down, this piece is releasing off of the bar inside the uh, receiver. And once it's cleared past that, then the whole thing slides out. Um, so putting it back in is, is essentially the exact opposite, uh, except I'm not gonna be able to line it up blind. It over here. Um, once you're in like this, uh, you'll, you'll start to feel tension as you grab onto that piece. And again, you can sometimes do this with your fingers, but just take something and, uh, and, and lever that back and pop it back over. And again, getting it back out is the same thing. If we want to do it slowly without yanking the parts apart, we just uh, do that part first, levering it open, and then it should just slide right out. Now at that point, there's nothing holding the top to the bottom. And so uh, we can just push the, uh, the, the stock off. Uh, and get rid of a gazillion pounds. I mean, this thing has all sorts of fancy doodads. Springfield did go kind of all out on the, hey, look at the cool stuff we can do. Um, if I can remember how to do this without breaking off all of my nails. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Which way does that go? I think it comes in from this side. Doot, 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 doot. So you've got little... Uh, cavity in the back of stock where if I had all the original bits there would be you know cleaning kit and all that good stuff and then a nice butt plate which also doubles as a shoulder stock so this if you're prone this goes over the top of your shoulder and then you pull this into your shoulder and that gives you two pieces of support there so uh, now I'm gonna get rid of this till much later and I'm going to try and adjust my lighting a little bit now that I have a little bit of my bench back. So I apologize if that's giving anybody strobe light stroke. Um, I'm going to set the fire control system aside for a minute and get into some of the harder parts. Um, actually, no, we're going to do something easy first. <laughs> we're going to just get rid of the mainspring. 
So um, the the op rod system here, pretty substantial from here to here, and it goes through this one piece, and then it has the recoil spring and recoil rod uh, going all the way up inside it. And so to get this guy out, the first thing we gotta do is ditch the recoil rod. And uh, that's being held in by you know spring force and uh, this pin. And this pin can only go so far because it's got a tiny little roll pin in there as well. So if you relieve the pressure with your, with your thumb, uh, you can pull this pin out or get something behind the roll pin and get it off to one side. The roll pin is there to keep it from flying all the way out of the gun. But once it's out, nothing is, is holding this back anymore. And uh, that whole spring will come out. And then you can kind of see what was going on in there. Um, you know, when that's here, this can only move a very small amount. Uh, and once the pin is out of the way, then that comes out. Nice long spring, doesn't matter which end is uh, in or out. Um, this is not the native uh, spring guide. This is from a company that makes a lot of M14 aftermarket parts. Uh, and I think that the only significant difference is, is this is thicker. The other one's a, a flat sheet. It doesn't, doesn't really matter functionally. So uh, to get this guy off the rest of the way, if you notice towards the back here, um, there's a recess uh, cut in that groove right about there. That is basically the place where this is going to be able to come out of the gun. So very much at the very back of the charging handle or op rod, uh, is a, a little raised area that rides uh, in, in the runner. You know, it, it's what's holding all this together. And what you want to do is, is physically, it's um, it, you can see it if you get good light in there, but essentially it runs from the very back to about a, a quarter of an inch in. And so that's where you're going to line it up with that notch. And um, essentially, you want to try and get it to pop up and out through that notch. And it really just is a matter of getting it perfectly aligned. And, uh, well, I ain't perfect. You know what? I think I lied about where it is. I think it's closer to the very back than that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That's the fun part about it. It's easiest to see once it's already out of the damn gun. <laughs> I was hoping I'd be able to just do it by feel. <sighs> You know, like climb around to the other side of the gun, and shine a light in there to try and remember where the damn thing is. <laughs> Mr. Flashlight will tell us. And yeah, I was right. It's right at the back. That wasn't crazy after all. So if we put it there, we should. Ah. Ah, ta-da! So, a little tugging and some grunting sometimes helps. And once you've popped it off the rail, pull it all the way to the back, and that'll clear the the front ring here that it's going through. Um, because until you're all the way clear of that, you, you really can't get it off. So then you bring it all the way to the back, and that should leave you with exactly enough clearance. This is the shape of the piece. It's just a big square bit, and. Uh, this is a replacement uh, guide rod, so it's not been worn in at all. Yours is probably a little bit more rounded if you don't have a brand new one. That's how I inherited this thing, is it broke its guide rod. <clears throat> and so what we was doing is getting this big square notch to pop out of the rail underneath there and into this little upward place. So essentially lifting it a little bit up and then popping it out so that it, it gets out of the groove that it runs in. And that's our op rod. And now, uh, while we're in here, we're gonna get our, our, our uh, bolt out of the way. Bolt has got um, a, a roller that actually rides in, in the op rod here. And uh, so it is a roller locked, go figure. 
which is not significant in that 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 the actual locking lug back there and, and this surface here so this is why it can't go backwards as it rotates and then it can't go back when it rotates up now it can go back to get it out of the gun um, you're going to pull the bolt back past this ledge here at which point you can lift it up and then if you start to uh, essentially just um, rotate it in my case since I'm facing the bolt rotate it a little bit clockwise it'll essentially roll out and roll back in at the same angle um, just don't force it it's, it's gonna come out really easy when it lines up so if you can, can tell what's going on here it's just going back and forth it's happy you're gonna pick it up and just uh, when it comes to the end start to roll it out roll it back in roll it back out All right so Bolt. We'll come back to that later. Now, uh, let's pay attention just a little bit to the business end. Um, and that's where we're going to break for a second and talk about tools. We haven't talked a lot about tools because uh, for most armoring work, um, your go-to tools, your hammer and your punches, um, roll pin punches, regular punches, hammer and good set of screwdrivers. And uh, that's, that's what you need. That's what does does the job almost uh, all the time and um, one thing that we do tend to hate are specialty tools uh, especially ones that you can't manufacture yourself at the shop so um, to that end however is the reality that there is the right tool for the job and there is the wrong tool for the job and if you are too far towards the wrong end, you're definitely going to make a mess of a gun uh, in terms of appearance and occasionally uh, go so far as to damage it. And this is a gun for which the Army, uh, well, Springfield, uh, in conjunction with the Army, has tool after tool after specialty tool uh, for various levels of how much in the field you are. This one actually... Uh, similar can go into the uh, the buttstock if it had to. Um, th this has got a gazillion crazy little functions involved in cleaning the various parts. The one that we care about here is the proper sized hex head wrench for the uh, the gas block. Except it is in fact a uh, a hex head wrench, and I have. Uh, there we go, yes. <clears throat> so, um, if you try and take this off with vice grips or a pair of pliers or, or anything else, um, you're going to you're gonna tear it up. Uh, the right size thing to do is, is a, I think it's a 3 16th socket uh, or the actual wrench as made by the Army-Navy store, the Army, or uh, any number of online vendors of historical doodads. Use the socket. Don't try and and monkey this off don't grab it and make a mess of it it's not going to come off easy it's going to be on there hard it is going to be cemented in place because it's the back end of the piston system and uh, unless somebody has gone through great lengths to put a whole lot of very high-tech high temperature molly based uh, grease on there to make sure that it's going to unthread nicely it's not it's going to be fierce this one is perfectly clean has some oil on it and I still had to uh, monkey it off with with super strength earlier today, uh, just when I was uh, getting it ready, because it's been sitting for for a better part of a year, and I uh, had cinched it up when I last hit it, and so it was hard to get to. Now, with that off, in a clean enough system, the piston should plop right out. Now, in reality, your piston may barely even move at all if it's covered with funk. So eventually you'll be able to drive it out so you can clean the thing. And uh, it, it does have a flat side, which is actually towards the top of the gun. So when you're putting it back in, you will have to have that lined up for it to actually come through. It does not rotate. And um, the, uh, oops, let's see if I can show this. Do, do, do. Nah. Uh, what am I trying to demonstrate here? 
Oh, right. So, uh, when the piston is closed, this hole is uh, actually um, where the gas can bleed off. This is the, the gas valve, and uh, you can turn this off. You can turn this into a straight bolt-action rifle with uh, the mighty power of a screwdriver uh, by turning this valve uh, to the horizontal position. Um, if I do this, it helps to push in just a little bit. It is on a spring. Uh, the hole that goes through that that uh, that screw is lined up with the slot. So like this, uh, it's the hole is this way, and that means there's no path between the barrel and the gas system. So that if you ever see somebody whose M14 doesn't go, uh, chances are their buddy took a screwdriver and played the biggest joke in the army. At least if you're in the army in the 60s. Um, there is a small roll pin on the other side holding that in place. Don't lose it. Uh, generally, the spring should be enough to pull back on that um, and keep it from falling out. Uh, so, what was I saying? Okay, so when this is in place and it's, it's closed, that hole in the piston is right there. So when the gas comes in, it actually fills the inside of the piston and pushes against the... the uh, the stop cock essentially um, and then comes forward and the minute it starts to come forward that's it you've closed it off from the gas again so it really is a, a moment that that it has to fill that and the minute the piston starts activating it's pretty much disconnected and whatever force it had there is all the force that it's going to impart it doesn't uh, just hold an open gas pathway to um, the inside as as rifle as bullets are going and that actually gives you a better control in automatic fire and under suppressed fire and under other other modes of fire um essentially uh the pressure bleeds off but is is then immediately cut off as the piston starts to move so the next uh thing that requires a tool is getting this off if you try and take um this muzzle brake off Without the right tool, uh, you're gonna mess it up big time. And this one, it got monkeyed with pretty hard. It's been in a vice once or twice in its life, you can tell. Um, this is the tool. It's not really expensive. Um, I don't even think this one's, yeah, this one's aluminum. Ooh, tuning fork. Um, aluminum, not, not even steel. And it goes uh, over and you want to make sure you're not in between the two pieces of metal. This seam here is, is where you're gonna go. And you hold on to it there and um, uh, you're just gonna crank it off. And this is gonna take a minute, so excuse me to do, uh, excuse me, like grunt off screen. Oh, I thought I was, had this loose enough that I'd be able to get at it. Ah. <laughs> ah. Hurrah! Victory. <clears throat> All right, so near near heart failure, but uh, victory. And once this is unscrewed, uh, now you can actually get in there to clean the crown and uh, the muzzle brake. Oh, I'm sweating already. Um, so again, without the right tool, that that ain't gonna work. Now, for cleaning some of these things, there's also the right set of tools. And that is mainly uh, these bad boys. Um, essentially, these are drill bits on handles. And the idea here is that you can ow, uh, use these to clean. Da, 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 da. There's my other tool. 
um, all the uh, all the important bits. This tool has a handy dandy uh, hole in it with one flat side, which uh, lets you um, lets you mount this in there, and then you can come in with the handy dandy drill bit and drill out all of the carbon that builds up inside there and then it's got the long skinny bit uh... whoops that's not where the long skinny bit goes uh, i'm trying to remember where the drill run goes drill number fifteen one eighty diameter doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, oh right haha <laughs> there's a second hole in there um, so the uh... first drill there's a way, uh, this drill is basically going that deep, whereas this drill is going to stop significantly shorter. So this drill is going to clean to to this point, and to get that last chunk clean, you've got the uh, narrower drill bit that'll get all the way in there to get the rest of the funk out. <clears throat> so, um, again, handy dandy tools that are important once this thing gets goopy so chances are if you're buying one it might not be shiny and new if you're not buying the actual SOCOM and uh, I have an extra one actually there's two different sizes because there's more than one size of these uh, so I'm gonna leave all that apart for now because um, we're essentially done the rest of this um, it's pretty easy to, f to figure out. I, I mean, unless you're having some sort of problem with your uh, sighting system, I would not recommend monkeying with it. It's really cool, but, uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't go fixing it. And uh, essentially, it's not real hard. Just there's a lot of different pieces in there. Just keep them in order, and you'll be, you'll be fine uh, getting it back together. Uh, the only other mechanical thing here is... Um, the uh, bolt stop, or the bolt hold back lever, and it's just in there with a uh, a roll pin. So you knock the roll pin out, and it falls out, and it's got its little spring. So we're not gonna we're not gonna waste time digging into all that. Um, what we're gonna focus our time on today is the more interesting and fun bits, which is the the fire control system, because um, you know a bang switch. That's what we all really like in terms of the tech. And it's also uh, something for which there's a, a couple tips and tricks that will make life a little easier should you uh, need to go in there after it. Do, 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 do. Getting this back on is the same as getting it off. Um, you may need to put it in a vise. If you do have to put it in a vise, uh, you either got, you got two choices. You can either buy the correct uh, block to hold the receiver block the receiver properly in there it's pricey because it's designed for when you're rebarreling the thing um, or uh, you want to vice it up here evenly and not interfering with the top or bottom just get these two things held steady so that you can uh, use those as your leverage point if you don't have it lined up just right um it's not going to go back together the the uh, the the piston um won't 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 fall uh through um if it's not lined up perfectly and the the uh the gas block or the gas plug as it were isn't going to mate up because i'm off whew, i'm off by like a half a degree here oops and now I drop my piston on the ground. Ugh. Sorry about that. <sighs> I assure you, once we get this out of our way, everything will be back on camera. Did I get that far enough yet? Yes. Yes. If this has a hard time going in, it's probably because you did not get it lined up yet. So uh, go back and make sure that's lined up. And uh, 
that's all we're going to put together for now. Let me find somewhere to stash this guy. And uh, one more on the topic of tools, which is we will talk about the bolt, but if you don't got one of these or its equivalent, don't take the bolt apart. <clears throat> that lesson, I, I don't know if there's enough ways to say it or if everybody has to learn it the hard way. I certainly was told it before I learned it the hard way. Didn't help me, but maybe it'll help you. Bottom line is there's way too many things under way too much spring tension for you to hold this together unless you're some sort of octopus creature with extra arms all over the place. Um, this uh, tool makes this easier because uh, it's going to use a little bit of uh, ratchet power to hold the... Um, the ejector in place and then we can push up on this little pin in the bottom which is lined up with the bottom of the extractor and if everything's lined up hunky dory then that will cause the extractor to pop out along with its oversized spring and detent and then the whole damn thing gets stuck until you tap it out with a punch do, 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 do. <laughs> like that at which point we can release it all and now that spring you're not going to push this in with your thumb it, it just don't work that way and the firing pin so that's all the pieces and if you were unfortunate enough to try this and you succeeded maybe you got a punch under this guy when he was in there and you hit it really hard and somehow you didn't lose the spring and detent uh you're ahead of 90 percent of the people if you hit it and you got it apart but uh, the chances of you getting it back together again without the tool uh, are small there's just no good way to do it um, now the tool is fairly makeshift they're not rocket science they're cheap as wood so highly recommend them and the the what's going on in here is that each piece is holding in the previous piece uh, in, in some in some fashion um, so as the extractor goes in the extractor is gonna it's the, the the firing pin is flat on one side here and the ejector has a flat cut into it those guys are gonna be lined up because uh, the pin of the extractor rides across both of them which means that you've got to have them both in place before you put the extractor in. So firing pin goes back in. Extractor spring of doom, or ejector spring rather. And again, now you've got to worry about the ejector being perfectly on its side. And once again, without the tool, this just sucks. And of course, even with the tool, you gotta still get all the parts together at once and uh, get them all lined up. So make sure that's lined up vertically. Make sure it's lining up with the part of the tool that's gonna push it in, which when you're first starting this out is pretty challenging, to be honest. It kinda wanna, wants to move all over the place till you get it under some pressure. Um, and then once you're in place, the spring system for the extractor, the extractor itself, and uh, even here, it helps to have a few extra sets of hands because you've got to now well holding pressure on to keep the uh, ejector in check. You've got to push that in far enough with a, a screwdriver to get the ex extractor around it. And then it'll snap into place. The detent holds the extractor properly. The firing pin can move back and forth. And ejector can also move its... Well, hell, if you can push this ejector by hand, you're a better man than me. Anyway, so another invaluable tool for this process. So before you start taking apart your trusty M14, have the right tools. Um, if you know anyone who was in the military, uh, 
in the very early pre-70 years of Vietnam or before, they might be able to tell you how they were trained to do this. I was not around at that time. Sorry. Uh, Alright, so... Now, this is arguably one of the best fire control systems ever made. Uh, it's not dissimilar to the ones that came before it. Um, it is a uh, two-stage trigger. Um, I don't have a full auto version for comparison, and so um, I honestly can't tell you how the full auto version worked, obviously. There's another seer out there somewhere doing more stuff, but uh, I haven't seen one to describe. So we're just going to talk about it as it is uh, in its semi-auto form here. And um, so the magazine release is built into the fire control system here. It is independent of everything else. That roll pin has its own spring and this lever. And uh, you take those out without anything else coming apart. Um, the rest of it is all the fire control system safety and this latching thing. Uh, so, if we if we drop the drop the hammer here, um, a couple things. One is uh, if you start to take it apart, you'll notice that uh, it's going to cock the hammer while you do that. So it's designed to do this so that when you get the fire the system out of the gun, it's also going to have cleared the hammer so that you can't hang up anything on the bolt as you're coming out so that, that by design is uh is is this this lever is also going to cock the hammer uh so when you, if you don't have it cocked before you try and take the gun apart it's going to cock it for you in that process no matter how you slice it um the next piece to be aware of now uh i did mention it is a a two-stage trigger and uh, you can see that um here as i as i pulled the trigger uh, this is your primary sear, and it's going to come to just about off, but not quite, at the same time as this piece in back bumps into the tail. Now this is just on a spring here. Doot, 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 doot. That's part of the disconnection, but it uh, it is in the way. So that means that when you get to this point, before this drops, so this is a, a, a very steady, smooth a consistent relatively light trigger pull with a distinct stop point exactly at the break I mean we are right on the ragged edge and then this spring force is suddenly added to what you have to overcome so to actually get it to to do the break you suddenly have gone up a couple pounds in order to push this back piece off and that's how you get your 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 nice double uh, <clears throat> your nice second stage so a very light first stage and a very very distinct and uh, reliable second stage um, the safety is a uh, pretty darn cool in this uh, for the one thing you cannot put it the safety on this this lever on the side here this big bar that intrudes into the magazine well that's that's the safety pushed uh, forward is safety off back when it's inside the trigger well that's the safety being on and um, by design, uh, the safety bumps into uh, the hammer if the hammer is, is not cocked. So if the gun is cocked, whoops, knocked my light off. If the gun is cocked, um, the, the safety can be put on. And you'll see a couple different things happen when we, when we put the safety on. One is you'll see the hammer gets cocked a little bit further and pulled away from the sear. So that's the this hook here is actually grabbing the hammer right in its mid section and pulling it down so it's away from the trigger group now no matter what i do the, these parts of the trigger they're not anywhere near their engagement points on the hammer however it is also so in this in this in this action it is a hammer blocking safety but if you look back here if i try to pull the trigger not that I'm not that the trigger is holding the hammer, but I can't do that either because it's also a sear blocking safety. So this this is one piece of metal that is that is not only retaining the hammer but also acting as a sear block. And when you release it, you're going to drop back down onto the primary sear and uh, pull the trigger and she go bang. So. Um, 
to take this apart, there's some uh, design features that uh, let this come apart uh, easier than, than many people realize. Um, one is if uh, if I pull the trigger, this little tail that sticks up is um, it is functional. It does not actually touch any part of the gun in normal operation, but it is kind of crucial to putting the thing together or taking it apart unless you're Superman. And that is it's going to provide us a, a pivot point for the main spring. So this pin, there's a wide side. Everything here is going to come out towards the right side of the gun. So if I just pushed on this uh, and tried to relieve that spring pressure, I'd kind of be all over the place. But if I let the trigger come back first, that is going to wedge the trigger into uh, the body of the fire control system you know, guard here. And that means that that, that gives me a, a fulcrum. That, that's my, my, my lever, my fulcrum point. And I can just push this pin right out and uh, the whole thing I was able to do by just using this point here as the pivot. And if I gently let up on it all, the trigger system comes out. And this is a big beefy spring. Um, this uh, here is where it pushes on the base of the hammer and big spring. This uh, spring guide here um, has an opening on one side. That's actually uh, where the safety comes up. It's cut out so there's room for the safety to move. If this had a fully cylindrical body, it would it would be too wide. And um, and then the the rest of it is is shaped to go over the actual uh, trigger uh, trigger and safety. So. Uh, this is doing a couple different things here. Um, that secondary uh, system back here, this is um, uh, that that second stage rather. Excuse me. Uh, this is on got these two little uh, bumps in there, and if you look, there they go in these two little grooves in that part of the trigger. So when this is pushed together. And uh, the whole thing is assembled. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Whoops. I just got parts everywhere. Sorry about that. Do, 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 do. Yes. Um, Uh, am I going to be able to illustrate this or not? Yes, essentially. Uh, what has to happen for this back piece to move is that it has to shift the entire body of this of uh, this piece, of, of the, the part that's holding the main spring. So the main spring is providing some pressure back onto those pivot points, and it essentially... You know, it's free because the pin is is very small, so that has that large area, so that it can move up and down freely in there, and so it naturally comes to that position. But when it runs into the hammer in that second stage, it will pop off as you get past it, which gives it that very very crisp break. Um, pretty darn cool, to be honest. Set all those guys aside. Uh, now that there's no uh, other force, you can see that the hammer is still attached to uh, the, the takedown to trigger guard. Um, but there's no spring tension left on those pieces, and so this will just tap right out from that side. And then this starts to flop around, and the hammer can lift right out. This piece does have a hook on one side, which means... Uh, in order to take it out, you do have to rotate it off the bottom, and that's easier to do after we get the safety out. Um, the safety itself uh, still functions, and you can now see the spring that's operating it is just pushing up underneath it, and it's the shape of what we can't see right now that determines that. But the safety itself, this is the big hook on uh, the back side, and this is uh, where that hook finally can grab onto the hammer. Um, let's, let's get them out of there. Uh, this is just going into, the, this has a, a pin on one side, 
So if we just lift it up, it comes free. The spring also comes out. And then this last piece, since we're here, uh, you just rotate it off. It, it does have this one edge that, that you have to put on first, but beyond that, just, you know, once it's towards the bottom, it'll, it'll easily just rotate off uh, without bending very much at all um, off the bottom there. So just like find find the place where it's you know, least engaging in, in metal and uh, it should just you know, doo -doo -doo -doo. I say that then I have a hard time finding it. There we go. Uh, these these areas here where it's uh, a little it's it's beveled in. That's the that's the easy place for this to happen. That's what they're designed for, essentially, is to to give this room so that this piece doesn't deform when you put it on or off. So uh, describing that safety. Now that we're we're gonna flip this around so that we can see it from uh, the safety's point of view. So normally the safety when the hammer is up it can't come down because it it runs into the hammer right here. Uh, once the hammer is cocked, however, it can, and not only can it, but when it comes down, it's going to pull that hammer uh, even further down. And so that's what's going on when this safety is actually pushed on. It's going to push past that piece and cock the hammer past the, uh, the trigger uh, control systems. Seem to have a chip out of mine. I'm not sure if that's a machine chip or if this got dinged up somewhere along its life. I think that's a, a ding, not a chip, machine chip. Um, when the system is uh, in place, the hammer is coming forward and uh, it does have a, a safety um, in terms of how the bolt itself is shaped. So this leg of the hammer if the bolt is back, um, it's going to run into the, the bolt and it's going to stop the hammer from getting anywhere near the firing pin. So it's only when the bolt is rotated to the exact right position that the hammer will come up and actually go in there at the same time uh, to hit the firing pin. So the firing pin will be protruding. If the bolt is out of position, that leg of the hammer keeps it, whoops, <laughs> bad demonstration, will cause it to run into the bolt face or the bolt rear and not be able to reach the firing pin. But once the bolt is rotated properly, presumably because it's in battery, then this piece can come in here and then and only then can the firing pin, the hammer actually reach the firing pin. So that's the uh, kind of primitive, or not primitive, but that's how the safety was designed uh, to keep it from firing out of battery. And then, uh, and goes bang and rotates past that and hmm. I'm gonna put this together because I'm not sure where the disconnect actually happens in this firearm and I'm I'm interested I think it has to do with uh, this mechanism itself is going to um, always be there to grab the hammer when it's underneath it and when you let the trigger go only then can it drop to the primary so this is also our our disconnector I believe and that uh, after the gun has a uh, has been fired um, and the hammer is going to come back and pop under this piece and be caught by this piece because of the angle of the trigger and uh, and only when you release the trigger will the hammer come up and get caught again. So let's put it all back together. Uh, this spring um, we look at how the the underside of the safety uh, actually looks. Uh, this spring sits like this and so it's either going to be popped into that location or that location and that gives the safety that's good thump thump feel as it goes on or off so we're going to drop that spring in first with the long leg upwards and it, it just goes over it, its pin in there and um, 
gonna go ahead and guide this back on for now just uh, whoops just because it's easier to do before we put you know, for some reason this is always there we go get that one on and we're gonna put the safety down through its little hole make sure that we're gonna catch the spring lining up with the, the hole in the back at the same time pop it into place so long as I hold them together I should get that firm snap snap back and forth um, gonna grab now this is another one where we want to put this together um, uh, carefully uh, because the trigger guard does engage the hammer um, and if we if we have the trigger guard all the way open and, and we stick the hammer in in the, in the up position then that's not how they work the the trigger guard has to be able to pull the hammer back and it's going to pull it back by that left leg so when this all goes together that leg has to be behind the trigger guard so when you line it all up that's what you want to make sure is is happening and do, 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 do. is that going to bring those guys to whoa <laughs> Have the safety off when you do this. And I believe I have it off. I believe I have it wrong. This isn't really as hard as I am apparently making it. Um, uh, there is a wide end to this pin. Uh, that again, when you're assembling, it all assembles from the left side. And, and this is completely wrong. These are not locked together. Wow! For all that fiddling, I still managed to put it on the wrong side of the damn piece. thought myself no, I can't figure out what I'm supposed to be doing This, this was right the first time I did it. I just, without the spring tension there, uh, I threw myself off. So I apologize. That is correct. Uh, essentially, um, if you lower the trigger guard, the hammer is going to come with it. And without the spring tension there is why I got this effect and I did not think about that. So I apologize. Apologies. Again, when this goes in, um, it's going to ride in that groove in the back of the hammer. And so uh, when you're putting it in, just uh, it's gonna you know, 
line up horizontally. The open side of the spring is the side towards the safety. And the trigger, we're going to again use that, uh, use this ledge right in the back of the trigger to get everything else to go together. And so when we set the trigger in here, we're going to hang on to the trigger and we're going to use the back of the, uh, the that secondary to push straight in and down with it and if, as long as you've got your trigger hooked on there it will line the whole thing up for you so you don't even have to think about it and after that then you get the whole cycle so um, yeah I was right that is the disconnect so uh, we pull it comes off primary sear bumps into the disconnector for our second stage pull it it fires if we're holding it's going to come back clear the first sear again but get hung up on the uh the secondary on the second stage as we let off it's going to get caught back by the first stage and then give us our two stage trigger again so that's the disconnect uh here is that as soon as that bolt cycles it back it'll get caught under that so Let's put her back all the way together. So first things first, we want to get our, our bolt back in. Um, and again, we just do our little rotation trick and get it uh, rolling in there. Now our op rod I'm going to line it up just uh, up here, you know, first with where it goes and it'll it'll flop in place but not be in there firmly. And now is where you want to make sure that the roller is under there to make sure the bolt is not, you know, you don't want to get this in the groove without it holding on to the roller. So place that in there and then uh, the op rod should be able to move far enough to the back. Whoops. Do, do, do. Gravity is apparently not my friend today. There we go. And we should be able to convince this guy. There it goes. Pop back in the groove, and the bolt is going to move with him. Rotate into place. That's our lock. And uh, from the back end here, we can see on camera. I'm not sure how well you can see this. Let me try it like this angle, maybe. Um, when it's all the way in place, uh, if you can make that out, can you make this out that uh, this area here is, is now where that leg of the hammer can reach into it. But if the bolt is uh, cycled, it's been rotated and now that piece would, would bump into the, the actual back. And so it's only when it rotates into place that, that, that that's out of the way enough that the hammer can reach our firing pin. Oh. Um, next, we want to put our spring back in. So the spring goes all the way inside the charging handle. And then our, our spring guide. And this just requires a little bit of finagling because it's a long piece. But once you get it uh, started into the guide, I'll be able to get it in there and then uh, you will have to relieve some of the pressure off it to get that pin in and once it's in there this will get held in by uh, the side of the <coughs> stock later on which means we're ready to toss it back into its stock if we can remember where we stuck the stock so to do that uh, the lip of the stock uh, goes, um, whoops, let's hold the gun right side up. The, uh, the lip of the stock will go into this, under this groove here. So that's, uh, that's how it goes together at the front end. And at the back, it really just clamshells in there. And uh, that's the whole you know, kit and caboodle there. And then uh, this um, this groove here, or sorry, the groove in the in the in the receiver is uh, matched up with this rail here, so that's the part that you actually have to line up when you're going in. 
It's pretty easy to do though because uh, the thing is going, uh, unlike most guns, th this is really going straight up and down. So if you're lining up the back and the front and all that at the same time, you're going to do that. The key to remember is just make sure the trigger guard is open. Once it's all the way in, as you push that trigger guard back, you will feel it start to clamp on there. And then you can just push that trigger guard and it should snap its way over. If it doesn't do it voluntarily, again, you can you know, ease some of that pressure off with a, with a screwdriver in there to get it that last little bit of the way to pop over and uh, and we just function check that bad boy good lord it's a good thing you guys can't see all of this it's pretty hilarious though so we rack it pull our trigger and rack it again we listen for that reset there it is single stage to second stage and it works and we might even be able to see that safety in action if we uh, if we hold this back and drop it. See how the hammer didn't reach the firing pin? Hammer stopped there because it bottomed out on our bolt. And now, if it could bolt is all the way forward though, then the hammer can reach it. So only when the bolt is in the locked position can that hammer actually get in there. And of course. If everything else is working, our bolt hold open will also hold. And oh, didn't test the safety. So pulling the safety, and now we know that the hammer is held back, the trigger is held back, everything, because that's just a monster safety. So there it is. That is the Springfield M1A SOCOM. And like I said, getting the rail back on and off, I will leave as an exercise to the viewer. Once again, a lesson in correct tools for the job. Um, some of these are, are indispensable. Uh, without this to get that that uh, <clears throat> that muzzle break off and without the right size socket, uh, you're just going to make a mess of some kind of pricey parts of the gun. And if you go after your bolt without something equivalent to this, you're also going to have a real bad day. Um, this one is actually handy because this will actually do uh, M1, uh, M14s and um, uh, what's the other one? The M, M1 carbines, uh, which is handy. It's got two in one. Um, I might have that backwards. It actually might be the M1 Grand and this one, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I can't remember what bolts look like till I'm actually looking at them. Hope you had fun.